Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Monday today. Uh, I know for you it's Friday. Hopefully everything works out all right and I get this video uploaded by then. But uh, you know what's interesting? It's, uh, it's the present for you right now, but uh, it's actually the past. And for me, it's the future. So we have all three of those uh, together in one video. It's pretty amazing, right? Well, I hope today's video works out good because I picked out a tool that's really interesting and um, well, it's, it's not interesting yet, but I think it will be. So let's get okay, to it. Today is a uh, project. Pretty interesting one here. These are these flat monkey wrenches that you usually find and a lot of them were made by Wizard Manufacturing Company. You can see how much I paid for this one, if I paid that much. And uh, uh, Wizard was a big producer of these. This one here is is marked W8 patented and it says uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Now, if you look at how that, that's Worcester. <laughs> I made that mistake before. I think on one of my other videos I said it's from Worcester and they were like, they were all over me. They were like, where are you from? It's so it's Worcester, Massachusetts and uh, so I have I have dreams of this wrench. This wrench, nobody even looks twice at it. They say it's a piece of junk. It's it's cr it's garbage. You know, I want to make this something that people take a double look at. So let's get Real working. Quickly, on. Um, one of the commenters today, about a gentleman by the name of Will Dennis, said said uh, was asking. He said, "Do I wear a respirator or you know a dust mask or something when I'm grinding?" And I always do, but. I have to tell you something, you know, there are really good dust masks out there and, and whatever, but if you're, they're not comfortable and you don't like wearing them, you know, you're going to eventually, or if they don't fit right, fit is really important. So after trying a bunch of different masks, I was using these uh, surgical masks and uh, these open up, there's a piece of wire in here and that, you know, goes around your nose and I do wear safety glasses, you know, and thick ones no less, you know, but when you're wearing glasses, you don't want something to fog up your glasses so a lot of the respirators do they're difficult to wear with glasses but i was liking these for a long time these come in a pack here like this and and you know they're they're, they're you know they work well then i was using these these uh again a little bit more comfortable they they wrap around it you can see when when they're opened up how they wrap around your face this one here was 50 pieces they were you know less expensive but um you change them out more often well, what I recently started wearing, only a couple weeks ago, I got these um, on Amazon, and uh, I I'm liking these because they're they're much better made as far as, you know, they have that, this is a, this valve here, that's important because when you breathe out, especially if you have glasses, it lets the air come out of the valve instead of getting this all moist and, and you know, and yucky. So, uh, and this nice foam seals, it has a good seal. I like these, so this is the ones I've been wearing. Not to mention, you can see I've been wearing for a couple of weeks, you could start to see when they get, you know, if they start getting really dirty, that means, you, you know, they're full. And if they're hard to breathe through or whatever, that's when you change them out, so it's easy to tell. So, um, these came in uh, 15 pieces in a box, you know. These are the most expensive here, but I do, when I do a lot of the grinding and metal dust and things like that, you do need a respirator. So just to throw that in, get a good rest, to get something that's comfortable that you'll wear. Here we are on a post wire brush evaluation. No surprises, nothing to this wrench, however. There is a slight bend to it. You could see right about here, it's a little high. When I flip it, it's a little low here, so we're gonna have to just touch it real quick on the dake. Um, over here, you can see the lettering came out real nice. It's a nice deep stamp. Uh, it's, it's nice, it's a nice wrench. You know, it wasn't used much, these hardly were. Over here, because of the rivets, we can't really take this to the belt sander because of the rivets, so this is where we have an issue. However, I went over it with a few different wire brush grades to give it a nice, it's a beautiful sheen on there, right? So we're good that way and we got the, the wheel nice and clean. So everything's going good. Let's go straighten this out on the dake. Everybody's favorite, the dake. Okay, you see we got the setup here and let's show you how we're gonna do it. Okay, now if you look here, you see the bow is right about here. If I turn it upside down and push one side like this, you can see it lifts the other side of the wrench, so there is a bow right there. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the bow under here, under two pieces of wood, and again, we could use steel, 
but um, the reason we use wood is if the corners will not leave any scratches on the uh, other side of the wrench. So we're going to do this in real time. You can see me pushing down. Now, I want you to notice one thing that, again, we got to bend past the area in order to straighten it out. Now, we have not even, I'm going to put a, you can see the bend is starting to happen here. Right here is, a, we'll go to one ton, okay? That's one ton. Now you can see it's lifting up on this side, but when we release it, it should spring back a little. And then, there we go, it sprung back. Now we have to take a look, okay? If we have any play, now flip it. See, just a very little bit, but it is straightening out a little bit. So we'll just go a little bit more on that. And that's how you, you kind of work it. You have to, it's, it's a trial and error. You don't want to go too heavy, but this time we'll just go a little bit more. See how it's bending up like that? And then it'll spring back when we release. That spring back is the important thing or else you'll be able to do this in a vise. There we go, I'm pressing down, no lifting. Now, no! we have a little bit of lifting on the other side, so we went a little bit too far. So that's that's why I'm saying about trial and error. So we, you have to get this to the point and, you know, just where you just kind of do it by eye, you know, until you get all the bends out. And not to go too much and you don't use any heat, just cold bend it. And this way we'll see where we are here. Okay, now we're straight off the uh, dake and you can see here, look straight down, got that perfectly straight. You see that? And um, I used to think that these were really abused, that's why they were bent, but it wasn't. It's because the steel was so soft. This was before the alloy steels and everything came along. So that's why back then tools used to bend like crazy. Okay, let's get going. Okay, we're about three hours into this wrench and uh, you can see we're getting there. It, now, normally this would be plenty enough to finish, you know, it's it's nice. Satin finish on here, won't show too much fingerprints. Works great. Jaws are good. It's straight as an arrow. Uh, you know, everything's good. And we could stop here, but this is where it goes to the next step. We already took it by curving the bottom here. Curve that bottom instead of making it straight. So that's one step we're going to do. You see how it's flat up here? Well, we want to uh, curve that so it's it's nicer in the hand and uh, take all the sharp edges off and we'll work on it tomorrow because I am beat. Okay, we'll be back. Now you know my favorite part. You remember what this wrench looked like before we started. Okay, well, we are calling this wrench done, and my goal was to make this wrench interesting looking, and I think we've pretty much come closer. Let me show you what it looks like apart. Okay, to make it a little, give it a little interest, uh, I drilled holes, spaced them apart, and uh, I also countersank them. And, I, you know, I couldn't go all the way through here because of the name, but, you know, you can see it still has the effect on this side. And when the wrench I is together, it has a pretty interesting look to it. Uh, jeweled the top here, left the back open, smoothed out the sides, rounded off the back. It's a pretty interesting wrench. It works very well. It's very smooth, like, well, it's never been that smooth, even from the factory. But uh, what do you think? Pretty interesting, right? The goal was to make this wrench interesting. Filled in some red here, and uh, I like it. It took me a while. Let me show you what I was thinking about. Now, uh, I wanted to get some color in this wrench. I was thinking maybe I would put dimples along it, and maybe I would color in the dimples, but uh, I went with the holes after all. So in closing, we have our WA custom wrench. Hope you enjoyed this uh, quick restoration or customization of this wrench. It is interesting now. And thanks very much for tuning in. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.